Okay, this is a short video in how to fit a turbo core to the actual turbo unit. So, if you see here, the two casings of the turbo, this is the exhaust casing which bolts onto the manifold here, and the exhaust here. So when you remove the core and the variable veins from the casing you're left with this empty exhaust casing, there's absolutely nothing else in there and the same for the compressor casing you just unbolt it from the core or the core unbolts them from it and it's an empty casing okay the first thing you need to do is get the circuit clip off here and the two actuator nuts, take the actuator out and then make a mark with a hacksaw blade there and on the exhaust side to ensure that you line up the exhaust housing and the, uh, the inlet housing um, in the correct place and, and correspondence with the exhaust housing so when you go to fit the turbo back onto the engine all your intake pipes uh, will line up okay so got the compressor housing off um, grip the unit in the vise um, nice and tightly and then get, take all the 10mm bolts that secure the core into the, the housing um, if they're tight and think they're going to break spray some oil some WD-40 something like that and, and then work them back and forward um, try not to snap any of them off okay so to separate the core from the housing you need to try and sort of support it with your fingers like so yeah take it out of the vice and support it with your fingers and then you want to get a good precision hammer and you're going to crack it sort of here and on the other side somewhere like there maybe back and forward supporting it with the fingers because if you support it with your fingers you're actually you're using the weight of the whole manifold to sort of pull down on the core as you hit it. Obviously, you hold it over the bench or something somewhere here until the whole thing just drops out. It can be quite tight, so if you work it back and forward, just putting it each side, um, it will it will come out. Okay, so we've got the core out of the housing, and we're left with the variable veins, and we can see here how. The whole thing sort of moves back and forward. See the veins open and then closed. Okay. So what we'll do is we're going to take the veins out of the housing and then we're going to rebuild it. So to get the veins out, obviously there's three small bolts holding them in. Um, sometimes it'll be like a 25 Torx or a 4 mil. Allen key, whatever it is, get it nice, sort of get it as tight as you can, good tight fit in on uh, a sort of small extension, and crack it a good three to four cracks with a hammer just to loosen the threads a little bit. Um, and then loosen all the three of them and work them back and forward a little bit. WD 40, you do not want to snap those off because if you snap them off, then we're you're in big trouble because there's no way you'll ever get them out. It's probably a new, a new housing you're going to need. Okay, so that's the veins out of the housing. You can see uh, um, there's a, this particular one has what's called a base plate um, for the veins to sit on to. <coughs> and when you get a new set of veins, you should get that with it. Some turbos have, that don't have the base plate, it's just, it's just come, like this one for example, that the veins would just sit on to the housing. So, first thing we're going to do is set the base plate in. And line up the three holes. Okay, so base plates in, and there are three spacers. And the easiest thing to do for them is just set them in, line them up with the holes, get your veins. Obviously, you'll be using both hands. I'm holding the camera phone with one. Set the veins in the housing, and then slot the three bolts down through the holes.
Okay, so vanes are in um, and the all three bolts are tightened up. Then the first thing we need to do is put the uh, operating ring on. If you notice the slot, the bigger slot will always line up with the locating hole which locates the core. So just set it on roughly for now. Don't try and slot it into place yet because you need to insert the rollers and pins. <laughs> little ruler and slot the pin through the ruler first and slot try and slot it in at a bit of an angle and then try and slot the pin down through the hole this is easier with both hands but you can see how it's just nicely slotted into the groove and the pin is down through the hole and we'll get the other three done okay so all three are in place um, in place roughly not correctly in their position because um, what we do now is we move each individual uh, operating lever that, to line it up with the slots on the ring and then we slot or slip the, the ring down over and sort of work it along until all of them are, are, in, put, are in place. Again, much easier with both hands because you would sort of hold the ring, a little bit of pressure on the ring as you're moving each slot. There we go. And it should move nicely back and forward like that. Absolutely no resistance. Um, and it, and it will move like that when it's hot also because it's a new set of veins, it's not the old set. What you find if you clean the old set and reuse them, when it heats up they tend to stick. Um, so you're much better with a complete new set if you're fitting a new core. Okay, so we're going to fit the core back into the housing. You can see the uh, slot and the vein ring is in line with the locating hole for the core. So basically you try and keep the two lined up like that and fit the core down in, wiggle the heat shield in the position, try and sort of guess where the pin is, try and slot that in and then move the vein VNT lever, and you just hear that click in the place into the into the, the slot, and, and it should move like this, and you can hear the veins open and close while you do that. And then just bolt it up. Okay, so that's it bolted up, all the bolts tight. Always check the VNT lever moves nice and free, which it does. No, absolutely no resistance. And the tur and the actual turbine uh, spin the compressor wheel spins nice and free, and now you're ready to put the compressor housing on. Okay, so obviously there'll be a new seal along with the new core. Just make sure that's in place. Um, have a look for your mark that you made on the uh, on the exhaust housing. Find the mark on the compressor housing, and that's where the compressor housing is going on. Be careful, obviously, not to damage the compressor wheel when, you, when you're putting it on. Um, slot it on, try and hold it on or get someone to hold it on for you and uh, get one of the bolts started. Okay so that's the compressor housing all bolted on um, so now we're just going to put the actuator on. Um, before we do that though have a look at the stop screw on the actual core casing. Um, make sure that the actual screw is at the, the same distance, same length, as opposed to the old core you took off, um, so that we had the, the proper VNT setting, and obviously that the little nape mill nut is tightened up, and then slot your actuator back on and just bolt that up. Okay, so that's that's it bolted back together, um, one core fitted to the casing. So remember, if you're using fitting a new core and new veins, those, those products are generally made brand new um, in a factory so it's 
it's the best way to repair or what's called, or recondition your own turbocharger without buying a complete turbocharger online from from other from various websites. Um, because as we said before, there's nothing in the casings once you unbolt the core and the veins. They're just empty housings. So the moving parts is the core and the variable veins. So if you replace those, in a sense, you've replaced everything that moves inside your turbocharger. Um, so fit it back to the, that's it right to be fitted back to the engine. Um, good engine flush, good quality oil and oil and filter change, and it should be good to go. Um, Thanks for watching this video and I hope it was useful.